happened? What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight, tonight, we are finally getting to a band that a lot of people have been bugging me to get into because I, I, we do a lot of Pearl Jam on this channel, and everybody's telling me the same thing. You have to do this band. If you're going to do Pearl Jam, you have to do this band. So... What the hell? We're gonna do it. We're talking about Soundgarden, ladies and gentlemen. Soundgarden on the menu tonight. Tonight. And this comes as a request from Kane M. Kane M wanted me to do a reaction to this live performance of a song from Soundgarden called Rusty Cage. Now, to the best of my knowledge, I've never heard this song before. Now, there's a possibility I have I don't know. Like, if, there, if you were to ask me, hum a, hum a few measures of Rusty Cage. Couldn't do it. I, I honestly could not do it. So, <laughs> I don't know what to expect. I've heard of Soundgarden, obviously. So, I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this. I don't know what to expect. I, I've heard that they're a little bit heavier than, than Pearl Jam is. That they got a little heavier sound to them, which... I'm looking forward to. So we're gonna do this. This was originally posted by TDC, and this video has 236,658 views, so it'll get you there. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this is an entire concert. This is not a single song. This, this video is an entire concert. Luckily, Kane M was able to give me a timestamp as to when the song actually begins. So I was able to utilize that. So there we go. Other than that, I think we're ready to get started here. Link to the original video will be down in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Other than that, let's jump on into this. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Cause here we go. All right, here we go. Soundgarden. 720. Okay, so July 22nd, 1992, I'm guessing it. Oh, Lollapalooza. Nice. Uh, Bremerton, Washington. Full concert. Yeah, that's why I'm at 2904 right now. And it, just in case you're wondering, you want to just see this song, go to 2904. Thank you for that, Kane. <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's I'm do excited. this. <laughs> I don't, okay, I don't think I've heard this song. It, it's not striking a bell. It's not ringing a bell with me, so I don't think I've heard this before. That bass player has got that bass down to his knees. Listen, I I like slinging my bass down low, too. I do. It slings down low to about my hip, a little past my hip, actually, usually resting on, like, my thigh. His is down to his knees. Holy hell. Gotta have some long arms, or you gotta hunch over one of the two. I'm I'm not sure what she's doing, but not easy to do. I tried that once, didn't work out so well for me. Ooh. Break 
So, is Soundgarden a three-piece band? They have, uh... I think that's Chris Cornell. I'm pretty sure that's Chris Cornell in the vocals, if I remember correctly. So, Chris Cornell doing the vocals and the guitar parts? That's a lot for a three-piece band. Uh, you got your bassist, and then you got your drummer back there doing harmonies. For a three-piece band, they sound pretty full. They do. I mean, I, I know there's other three pieces out there that sound super full. Like, you know, I'm going to use Rush as an example. Rush always has a great time and, and a great ability to sound super full as a three-piece. So, uh, shout out to Rush and all the Rush fans out there. But, uh... Surprisingly, these guys do sound pretty full for a three-piece. You know, it, it's it's not easy to do. It's really not easy to do. So, kudos to them. Let's keep going. It looks like the bass player is playing the same riff as the as Chris. Wait a minute. I see another guitar head over here. So they're a four piece. Okay. Okay. That explains. I was like, how are they getting that full sound with just three? Now I see what they have a fourth. Okay. They have another guitar player. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, it seems like the bass player is playing the same guitar riff. So they're, they're mirroring each other, which is really cool. Uh, kudos with the bass player for being, for being able to do that. Does not sound like. It doesn't sound like an overly complicated riff. It, it doesn't sound like an overly complicated riff. It's it's about syncopation more than anything else. It's not it's not so much difficulty in notes or in note structure. It just it seems like it's about the syncopation and timing. So it's an interesting riff. I have to try that sometime for myself. I have to download the music for this or something and give it a try. I'm kind of kind of intrigued. I'm gonna have to do that on my own time sometime. Let's keep going. Oh my god, look at that crowd! Show the crowd again! <laughs> I love that tone he's got on his bass. He's got a full bottom end tone. But he also has that high end uh, percussive pitch that he can get the you can hear the the impact of the fingers on the strings. You can hear the plucking, which is really cool. He's he's got a nice smile curve going. Is yeah, going back to EQ. You talk about EQ having a, a a smile curve. What you're doing is you're taking the high end and the low end of the EQ, keeping them up high, and as it goes down into the middle, it swoops down. So you'll have your EQ set like. High end at like, well, for bass, it should be like high end at like a seven or at seven and a half. Low end at like an eight. You always want your low end to be higher than your high end. So you have your high end at about a seven, seven and a half, bass eight, and then it, as it goes into the middle of the bands, it gets lower and lower until everything's at like a five. Four and a half, maybe even as low as four. You don't want to go too low. You do want to have some mids in there, but you don't want to be mid dominant. So, good tone, good tone on the bass. I love how he's playing it too, way down low like that. It looks cool. I don't know how effective it is. I, I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't imagine that's easy to do. So it's pretty cool. The drummer's doing a great job too. I love the drummer's time. He is right on top of things. With his drumming. He's absolutely... He's playing great fills. Uh, Chris Cornell's vocals... They're not bad. They're just... I think they fit this band really well. I just... Uh, it sounds a little pinched. Here in the throat. It sounds just a little pinched. I know when he did it, more of his solo career stuff. I know he kind of opened up a little bit more. Which was a good thing to hear. In here, it sounds a little pinched though. But for this purpose of the band and for the style of the music, I think it fits really well. So, 
And the last thing I got to say is that crowd. Holy smokes. Can I? Can we get a shot of that crowd real quick? Look at this crowd. Look at this crowd. All the way back as far as you can see. Look at this crowd. My God. It's a big crowd. Love it. Lollapalooza was always known for having big crowds, though, so I'm not surprised. But still love seeing it. Woo! A little sloppy there in the guitar, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, that riff. <laughs> I can't take my eyes off the bassist, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I can't tell if that's the end of the song or not. I think it was. I hope I'm not ending this early. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm like, I'm like 80% sure that was the end of the song, and they're going into the next song, so I'm going to cut it here, obviously. Huh, okay, that's interesting. Boy, I hope I'm right. Well, there you go, folks. That was Soundgarden with a live performance of their song, Rusty Cage. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that a... I'm going to give that a 7.5. Yeah. 7.5. I feel good with that score. Let me tell you why. So, as a song, it was very riff-driven on a single riff. So you had that single riff repeating through pretty much the entire song. Now, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, as long as it's executed well and there's no need for anything else. And this song is pretty simple. This song is pretty straight ahead. The style of music is pretty straight ahead. So it really didn't need any other things. It really didn't. It was, it was able to rely on that one riff and do it well. Did it get a little repetitive? Yeah, it did, but it's okay. It wasn't unpleasant. I think if the song had gone for like another minute, it would have started to drag. It was starting to get like, okay, what else? But because the song is kind of short, I think having that single riff worked. So kudos to them on that. Let's talk about the instrumentation. I cannot get enough of that bass player. That was fun to watch, man. He was he was the guy to watch in that. He really was. He stole the show. Uh, between the bass being slung down so low, his walking around, he had like a skulking around kind of a movement to him. Like a... Like a Slender Man type of feel to it. He was just kind of skulking around with that bass slung down low, hunched over, playing it well. And he had a great tone, too. He was playing well with a great tone, so I loved him. I loved everything about him. Next up was the drummer. I loved his feel. I loved his touch when it came to playing the drums. What I mean by touch is this. He knew how to hit the drum just with the right amount of power to make it not stand out, but noticeable. It wasn't like he was just sitting in the back you know, where nobody could really hear him or even pay attention to him. No, he, he hit it just hard enough that 
he was noticeable. Like, hey, I'm over here, pow. And he would hit the drum just hard enough without being overbearing, without drowning anything else out. Especially in live settings like that, it's very easy for the drums to do that when they're mic'd especially. So he had a great feel, he had great touch, and I really liked his playing style. I don't know how to say this about the other guitar player. I, I hate to say it. To me, it was almost like he wasn't needed. Like, it was nice having that fuller sound because he was there, but I feel like it could have just been Chris Cornell, the bass player, and the drummer, and they would have been okay. Like, I, I hate to say that the other guitar player was insignificant, but... To some extent, to me anyway, he did kind of seem insignificant. Like, why was he there? I mean, he provided a fuller sound, but he never soloed. He never played any lead lines. Chris Cordell did all the lead, did all the melody lines in the guitar and in the vocals. So, all the other, all the other guitar player was doing was playing chords. So, I mean, it did fill out the sound more, which is good. But I don't know. Maybe it's me. I, I just. I almost don't see a reason for him being there. And then Chris Cornell's vocals, I've already said, he has that type of pinched at the top sound of his vocals, like on the break, like on his vocal break, he kind of pinches a little bit. But for the purpose of this style of music and the sound of the band, it fits like a glove, man, it really does. I, I know in some of his uh, solo stuff, I know he opens up more and has a fuller sound of his vocal. Now, I don't know if that's from training or that's just him adjusting style to the music he was doing. I'm not sure. Guitar playing, he, he did a pretty good job with the guitar. It was dirty in a couple places, which two things, not neither of them bad. One, it showed that they were playing live and not playing to a track, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, two, it just added an element of fun to the guitar playing and to the music and to the song as a whole. I love live music, and I've said this before, I love it when I get to see the musicians make a mistake, or when I get to hear them make a mistake. Now, if the mistake is being made over and over and over and over and over again, there's a ton of mistakes in the song, that's not good. But if you hear a mistake every once in a while in a song, I like that. I do. I, I From a live standpoint, I like that. So, that was good. So that's why it's getting, what did I give it, a 7.5? You must be so embarrassed! <laughs> Changed my mind. What's the matter with you? Corrections and retraction. Go ahead. Corrections and retractions. I deserve it. Corrections and retractions. Yeah, I deserve it. Okay, I'm gonna change my mind on this score. I'm gonna give this a 7.8. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it up a bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump them up to a 7.8. Really good song. Really good performance. Just really good overall. Leaning towards great. Getting there. Getting there. I, I wonder how the studio version would sound. I, I'm going to have to go and listen to the studio version now. I won't do a reaction to it, but I, I'm going to have to go listen to the studio version of it. So, yeah. 7.8. Final score. I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hopefully, you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job. And I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the video and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It will do me a world of good, and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. Finally, if you do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on this bell, it will keep you up to date on everything that happens with this channel, including when new content gets dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, click on the bell, and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's going to do it for today, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.